I was actually just about to button up this attic bedroom conversion here and you know put the drywall on and everything so you couldn't see the framing and then it struck me that when I was about to do this I found almost nothing out there on the internet or videos or forums or whatever that helped tell me and the common person how to turn your attic into a bedroom in a way that meets code especially with all the problems um, that you come across when you're up here in the attic like joists that are too small and they span too far and they're spaced too far apart like what I have up here is 24 inch on center two by sixes spanned like 14 feet or something like that I don't even know and my ceiling rafters are two by sixes which makes meeting the R30 insulation code here where I live in the south next to impossible unless you use spray foam and if you've researched spray foam you know that that costs a fortune so if you're a do-it-yourselfer you're probably a do-it-yourselfer because you can't afford spray foam so I just wanted to show you a few of the little problems you're going to run across and the solutions to those problems I will tell you this is a permitted construction project I went to the city my city has a um, special exception they make for homeowners and you apply for uh, an exemption and they give you a number and it's basically like a contractor's license number and you can act as your own electrician your own framer your own plumber everything and instead of putting the plumber's license number electrician's license number in the blanks on all the applications etc you put your number to your uh, exemption form that or the the number they give you for your exemption and that acts as your license number so it's really cool the only thing is you got to do all the work yourself or if you contract it out to someone else they have to be licensed so I do all the work myself because I'm cheap and it's not that just that I'm cheap we just don't even have the money to hire somebody to do the work not that there is great to have people to do the work you know it's great that there are licensed contractors that have skills out there they are awesome but some of us just can't afford you guys so anyways I just wanted to show you what we came across and I have got everything inspected so far so we've had the electrical inspected we've had the plumbing inspected we've had the framing inspected I'm about to as soon as I finish the insulation get the in insulation inspected and um, yeah so anyways I'm gonna show you the problems to framing an attic or making an attic bedroom and the solutions to those problems thanks for watching the first problem you're going to come across is joists that are too small to support the weight that you span. So if you see here in this, this is an old section of the attic that hadn't been reframed yet. Ah, I wish I had some light back here, but maybe you can see. These are two by six joists and they go under this knee wall here. and they span almost to the center of this space out here. So that's way over there, all the way under the knee wall, out to the middle of this, with a small exception where the hall is. So there is a hall wall there, and there's probably a hall wall right there, all the way to the end of the house. Well, almost to the end of the house. So that is a long span even for ceiling joists, much less for a floor you're gonna be walking on. So, first thing we did was went downstairs under there, and so that would be the ceiling beneath there, the ceiling of a bedroom down there, another bedroom over here, and that, that knee wall runs basically in the middle of those ceilings, and we built temporary walls so it would be you know a wall sort of like this except that you don't nail the bottoms and the tops you actually make the studs just a little bit longer than they need to be and you angle them in there and hammer them 
until they push the ceiling up flat again. So, so since these, these joists span such a distance, the ceiling's actually all sagged in there, even with no weight up here. So first thing we did was go downstairs and build these temporary walls. You put basically a, uh, let's see if I can do this with this wood over here. floor and then you hold a board up on the ceiling and then you take studs eh, and you hammer them let me use this knee wall as an example so this this is the top plate that I put against the ceiling and we'll imagine that's the bottom plate and it's actually touching down there so we angle that in there and we just keep hammering this in until it makes the roof or the, the joist not bowed anymore. And the way we know it's not bowed is what we do is we take a string, a really tight string, and we position it one on this side of the knee wall and one way down there to the other side of the knee wall and we pull it tight and you will actually see where it's all bowed. This whole knee wall will have a slight slope to it, so there will be a gap in the middle, <clears throat> excuse me, in the string, where the string is taut across there, there'll be a gap. So after we get the that all jacked up by those temporary walls, then we come in and we double joist so i've added two by six joists it's called sistering joists to all the other two by six joists and that is a still even for that so that's basically four by six joists that span still way too much distance especially since they're 24 inch on center so if you're looking at joist tables or whatever you're still going to find out that that is way over spanned so the floor was still a little spongy so the way I overcame that is this box beam that I turned my knee wall into so here here is what excuse the mess let's see here down here is what the knee wall looked like originally so these are two by four space 24 inches on center and there's a little bit of a strong backer to, <clears throat> to help them from, from sagging, help it all from sagging, kind of unite all these, these studs in this wall. And what I did was I had to turn this into a beam to hang all these joists from, basically, to make them sturdier and stronger. So what I did was I added 24 inch studs or cripples or whatever you want to call them between so here's the here's a joist and there's a joist and in between them I added another one so that's about 12 inches in so every 12 inches there is either a stud or a cripple in this knee wall box beam that I've made so after I added these studs and cripples and then added um, these cross members here, purlins or you know plates or whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> then I came back and I used wood glue because I wanted this thing to be strong. But it's a box beam. So then I took, which was actually scrap. This was the floor that was up here, the attic floor before I tore it out and I ripped them all in 24 inch strips so this is half inch plywood that used to make up the floor so you can imagine how spongy that was so anyways uh, this was the floor half inch plywood we glued it and nailed it so every 12 inches all these cripples every 12 inches studs top plate or purlin or whatever you call it and we did it both sides a little bad down here 
and we staggered our joint so I don't know if you can see this very well but there is a joint right here so there is not a joint on this side that's a pencil line that's not a joint the next joint is way down there and way down there so they're all staggered it's all glued it's all nailed and that turned at least part of this knee wall into a box beam which is extremely strong especially if it's glued too so once we did that and we've still got our double joist we still got our um, <clears throat> temporary walls downstairs that are jacking the ceilings up level then we come back before this floor was installed obviously because we couldn't do this after the floor was installed and we put in hangers so here's a hanger and it goes down here under the floor and it hooks to the floor joist I actually I think I have a hanger I will show you <coughs> excuse me here we go right here so this is a hanger and this is what you see up here this part of the flange and this part is down there and is <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna do this where there's more light do, 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 do. imagine this this right here is the floor joist so hanger hooked to the wall and then this part is hooked to the joist so this floor is not only supported by double joists it is supported by a box beam created with scrap lumber out of a knee wall and hung by those hangers so this floor does not bounce whatsoever even though it's just sister two by sixes that does not bounce at all and I had the inspector come in here and he goes over to this floor it's the original attic floor and I don't know if you can hear it it squeaks and moves and bounces a lot so when the inspector came in I said I don't know if I can do this I'm kind of halfway into the project and I want to make sure I'm doing everything legal I said here's what I've done I've sistered these they span a long way it's 24 inch on center but then I turned these knee walls into box beams actually I don't even know if I told him that he might have just noticed that he might have not noticed it and all he did was and this is awesome these guys are great because they actually do see how everything works practically he came in and he actually bounced on the floor and then he came over here in the attic and he bounced on the floor and he's like I think it's great he says you can definitely tell a difference I think it's very sturdy you know I'm gonna prove it so that is number one turning your joists which are nearly impossible to get the right depth of joist and the right span this is how you get it this is how you go from an impossible attic bedroom situation into an attic bedroom situation <laughs> then the next thing we're going to talk about um, is the insulation so this is a poor man's foam insulation that I'll go into in the next video thanks for watching